Well, here I am at Open World with Paul Greenberg. Yes, the famous Paul Greenberg. Mr. Actually, the famous one's a right-wing conservative columnist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get to pick the brain of the genius around CRM, social CRM, and all the cool stuff that's happening. And he's actually having a seminar coming up uh, in 2010. So if you want more information, you can either contact he or I. It's going to be great. It's going to be a training, a must-do. So, Paul, you're here at Open World, you're mm -hmm. checking out all the stuff. What are your impressions? What do you see? Anything new? Anything surprising? Anything just completely stupid? <laughs> I always think, cause I, I literally always see completely stupid things, but I'll, I'll leave that part alone for right now. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it's interesting when it comes to a, a, anything but so, uh, CRM, it's pretty uneventful. So far, it's been entirely uneventful. It's mostly been giant advertising, you know, speeches. Right. Um, pay, but, pay to come, and then we'll market to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and of course, HP being the paramount, a paramount example of that yesterday. Mm -hmm. the, I didn't go to that. Uh, well, you didn't miss anything. It, it was a the, somebody. I can't think of her name now, but she was an EVP of HP and mm -hmm. something. Gave a giant ad for HP. Hmm. And people walked out in droves. Oh, oh, it was Oops. totally yeah, the crowd. The crowd uh, spoke. Well, Wisdom hey, of the people crowd, vote like, with their feet yes, or then, with uh, their fingers on Twitter. So there was a good, um, let's say, I'd say, forty thousand feet that left. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of feet. Now that said, yes, there actually are some actually important innovations with the caveat here but important innovations in CRM that I saw here and okay one that was exceptionally important the interesting thing with Oracle has been that when it came to um, social CRM it was never actually social CRM it was always internal collaboration based on sales effectiveness sales optimization primarily and they had some you know they have some very good products for that like sales library which is my favorite particular one mm -hmm. the much higher risk sales prospector which I think is a massive high risk uh, app but at the same time if it actually works you know, it would be hugely beneficial but it's that's a big if um, and then sales campaign which is also a very effective app but again all of this is for the power of internal collaboration kind of enterprise tool really right but they were good now that said, this time, with the use of uh, RESTful architectures and the new Siebel toolkits that they're releasing, and um, their what they call implicit social relationships, which is the most important single thing that they talked about, um, they actually have something which I will call, which is something I don't do very easily, a social CRM application. Are uh, there really? I mean, that's one of the things that, that one of the if you follow us in hash CRM, we've been talking about. Is there anything really out there that does, I mean, if you define CRM as marketing, sales, and service, customer experience, order fulfillment, the whole enchilada, right? There are not really apps that do social marketing, social sales, social customer service, right. social order management. And so, I mean, I was, I was at the talk where they talked about the listening post here, right. and I thought that was really interesting. And then I went to the analytics part, and I thought that was really interesting. So it seems like we're edging towards real social CRM. What's your impression on that? Well, this, actually the thing I found most, I've, I've actually been playing with lithium, uh, I mean with lithium, with listening. <laughs> with listening I like posts. lithium too, Me but too. they're not social CRM yet. No, no, they're a long way from it, even though they're still a very good app. A yeah, very good, love them, uh, love them, agreed, but yeah. Right. Well, no, I, the, the, so listening post is, um, you know, it's a decent social media monitoring app with natural language processing and I've, I had a, I actually had it on my desktop for a while and hmm. well the reality is that um, if I had to compare it and Radiant 6 I'd still take Radiant 6. Okay but, good to know. But listening post is still uh, Deepak Das before he left Oracle actually developed it and it's hmm. it's a decent app it really is decent it's not it's not bad at all and the NLP stuff is pretty solid. Well that's really cool to use NLP because yeah. I mean, to really be able to search and really be able to have content and context, right, right is really the key here. And that's, that's why they have something there, but the truest aspect comes really with this. They did a demo, I think it was Mark Woolen who actually did the demo, mm -hmm. of, uh, of an Apple iPhone site. And on that site, it was he took the role of a parent looking for an iPhone for his, you know, young kid. Oh, what apps? What apps are good for them? Not right. good for them? The right. And here's here's the critical thing. So, 
the, the way it was formulated was there was a button on the app that said uh, connect with someone like me. Okay, mm. and you click on that button, and then what it did How is... How does it, it know what you are? Well, you re you register. Okay, so we know basic, about... Well, there's two things, though. It's basic profile information, but at the same time, it's also... Uh, you're, you're theoretically either at the time or at the time you register, put in this, and this is critical, what is actually a Siebel customer database. Hmm. All right, now, here's Does the Does the web crawl and look for, for information about me? Not so or? much. It actually okay. is taking hardcore Siebel customer data here. Ah. So what it's doing, though, is it's looking at the rest of the Siebel customer data, mm -hmm. and then when it, you click on so, find, uh, connect to someone like me, it finds the, you know, five, six, ten people whose profiles are much like yours. Okay. And the interesting thing is that it then gives you a score based on how close to the profile it is and how much you want to do. And then it has an area that says ask a question. Mm -hmm. You fill out the question you want to ask. You choose which of the people you want to communicate with and then they communicate. Now, there's, there's a process in the political world called micro-targeting. Yep. And it essentially looks at your lifestyle and how you live and then it kind of predicts who you're going to vote for. Yep. Okay, based on lifestyle and attributes and it looks at data of other you know, constituent or other potential voters who have and find similar similarities in profiles. Didn't based on SSPS their past. do that? They originated it. Okay, but, that's what I thought. Um, but because they did a lot by, for Obama, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and that's but it's 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 been a generally accepted practice in the political world for I'd say four or five years. Got it. And it's sort of like-minded segments, really, yep. is what this is. And so that's and that's really what implicit relationships that Anthony Lai talked about yesterday was, and that's yep. what the Siebel thing is looking for. What makes this interesting, and this is where it becomes social serum. The, the Siebel customer data it uses is the same customer data that the company is using to do its, you know, effective, efficient, blah, blah, blah stuff. But it's making the information available to the customers for the purposes of communication and collaboration. So for the first time, you actually have the customers being given a channel utilizing what's typically been historic internal customer data to actually make the matches so that you can talk to someone like you mm. who can then answer your questions in the appropriate fashion based on your profile. So you actually have a, a, a customer communication channel that's built into the, um, into the app. And I think it was built through the new Siebel toolkit, if I remember, although... That could just be a senior moment, you know. So, <laughs> you know, so the th but that is actual. That's real social CRM because yeah. the, the missing piece has always been the communication between the customers or the customers in the company. Yep. And now this piece actually has it, hmm. which I found to be absolutely potentially, um, let's say, very. Um, it could be a groundbreaker, uh, but again, this is a demo and. Right. development environment. It's right. They production. did the safe harbor and they said, look, right. we're figuring this out. We have a prototype. So all of that, which I was really, I, I don't know if you were there when Anthony talked about kind of the light bright map of cu customer conversations and this big map where you could see the light bulbs light up. And then he, he said it was a piece of art in the mu art museum oh, yeah. here. Right. And so I was like, that's really an interesting way. And he said, I want a map a light bright map of all of the customer conversations that my customers are having so I can visually keep track of it and know it's important. So I was like, that's a really cool visual aspect of this back and forth, customer to customer, customer to company, company to customer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where we're getting social, right? Exactly. And you see, now Anthony seems to think that the Siebel data is transactional data is sufficient to make the matches. I don't. Okay. okay, I think it needs more than that. I think it needs external data and profile information and lifestyle information to make the matches because, you know, pure purchasing behavior and other transactional data is it's an important start, don't get me wrong. Sure. And in conversation, you know, to be fair, in conversation with Anthony afterwards, um, he acknowledged that much, you know, that it does take external profile data too, you know, right. to make these kind of similarities work effectively. So that was really, uh, to me, that was critical okay it really was critical